Have you ever accepted a job offer, started in your new job and realized, I just made a huge mistake? Well, I've been in recruitment for 15 years and in that time I've talked to thousands of candidates and I can tell you the ones who switch jobs and end up regretting it, well, it's typically for these reasons. In today's video, I'm going to give you the reasons people commonly regret moving jobs from one job to another. All right, let's get started. Now, the first main reason people regret switching jobs is they feel an immediate lack of job security. Well, think about it. If you're in a company and you've been working there for a long time, you've built a lot of relationships and you've demonstrated over time that you are highly effective at what you do. You feel pretty safe. But if you move to a new company, there's actually a saying, last in, first out. And what that means is if the company hires you and all of a sudden they go through a hard time, maybe things aren't going as well as they planned, they're under budget, all that kind of thing, et cetera, or under revenue, excuse me, and they have to start looking to make cuts. Well, as a new employee, you might be in a riskier position. You're someone who hasn't built up that relationships over time, and they might see you as someone who's easier to sever and move out of the organization. I've talked to so many candidates over the last 15 years who switched companies, then the company went through a bit of turbulence, and then they found themselves on the outside looking in. Now, the second main reason is unhealthy office dynamics. When you go to an interview, everyone is essentially on their best behavior most of the time. You are too, as a candidate. You are definitely on your best behavior, otherwise you probably wouldn't have gotten the job. But what is really hard to tell is what is the office environment or the company culture really like? So when you're there and everybody's all friendly and it's an interview and it's selling mode and all that kind of stuff, things seem great. But then you start as an employee. And then you start to see people's true colors. You see what it's like to work with them. You see what they're like when they go through adversity or they're frustrated. And what I've heard over the years is that as a candidate, you experience one thing, but as an employee, you experience something way different. And when people have regrets about switching jobs, this is often one of the main culprits. Hey, by the way, if you're finding value in this video, do me a favor and hit that like button. It's free, it tells YouTube I don't suck, and it motivates me to make more videos like this, and it really helps the channel. And if you're willing to do that, well then you might as well hit subscribe and that notification bell, that way you never miss one of my three free weekly videos, all designed to help you nail your next interview and land your dream job. Another huge issue that employees have when they switch jobs is that the job was oversold. When you're in the interview, they're saying, you're gonna get to do this, you work with these people, you get to work with this tools, there'll be cross-team collaboration, you get to make this significant of an impact. But then you move into the role, and it is not what they sold you. You have a less impactful role, you are overworked, you are under-resourced. I have heard from so many people that they were sold a bill of goods, and when they finally get there, and they're actually doing the job, it does not align with what they were told. This is a very common issue um, because in the interview process, the employer has no incentive to tell you just how hard the job is going to be or how underwhelming it's going to be or how it won't be as rewarding as it might be. You know, they, they don't see the benefit to that. What they do see the benefit is securing an employee because when there is an open position, that means there is a problem for that organization. They do not have a person doing that job. They need to solve that problem. And one of the ways you solve that problem is by making the role enticing so you get a good candidate to accept your job. So this is a major issue that people run into and it is really hard to see in the interview process, is that going to be the case or not? Now, one of the things that's probably most demotivating but is hardest to see in the interview process is some of the things that won't measure up once you start. And what do I mean by that? So when you're in an interview, there is no way to know what the company onboarding is really like, what their training is really like, what their development is really like, what the opportunity for advancement is really like. They can talk to those things, but until you actually experience those things as an employee, you're kind of at their mercy to just take them at their word and assume it's correct. And I'm sure many of you have the feeling of like, yeah, I was told one thing, I experienced another. And that's another reason people have regret is there are so many things that make a place a good place to work outside of benefits, outside of the role itself, and outside of compensation. And these other things, they are really hard to see, they are really hard to gauge as a candidate, and as an employee, it becomes much clearer. Now this one's major, and it can actually make a job uh, incredibly hard to, to deal with and hard to succeed, and that's unreal expectations. Often, 
You switch companies, you take on a new role, you're excited, maybe it's a bigger role, maybe it's more pay, but all of a sudden the hiring manager has much higher expectations than you thought. All of a sudden you're there like, well, that is more than I'm able to accomplish on a day-to-day -day basis. Their expectations exceed my ability or the time I have to perform the task they'd like me to perform. This happens a lot. It's one of the reasons I always tell people you need to ask, hey, what does this person need to accomplish in the first 12 months in order for you to consider this hire to be a success? If you don't ask that question and then you start that job and the expectations are unreal, you have no one to blame but yourself. But this is a common thing I have heard in my 15 years of recruitment talking with candidates after they accept a job they wish they hadn't. Now, one of the things that you're gonna need to know is you're gonna need to know how to bounce back. If you take a job and it is not a good job, then you're gonna have what I call a career setback. And it's why I made this video here. This video here is how to respond to a career setback in a way that is productive. So I'm done here, but I'll see you over there.